Hey everyone, I'm back with a Walkman video and some pain and suffering. Um, I picked up the WMF65, one of my favourite models. Uh, this is another one that's just been sitting around waiting for its time for repair. Overall, uh, the unit is actually in very nice condition. It's not a lot of marks on it um, and things like that, but it hides some dirty secrets. The batteries have leaked inside of it and it needs um, a bit of restoration and of course a belt. So um, what we'll do is we'll pop this one apart and have a look. Screws are the same as the previous videos. There's two or three on the back uh, case there and one on the right, one on the left top. Um, and two in the middle there. Um, the left side one there is the longest one and the right side one is the shorter of the two so that's how you remember that. And of course there's two on the uh, right side here next to the headphones and the um, volume knob. Here's the corrosion, it's pretty bad, it's actually eaten away the traces. I've done some vinegar um, on this to neutralize the acid and you can see it's eaten away at the paint at the bottom of the battery compartment, not very nice. So um, what I'm going to do now is test the unit for continuity across some of those traces. They looked pretty bad so yeah, not getting anything through that uh, line. Um, trying to solder to the pad to repair some of the traces, uh, it's, there's no pads left. They're all gone and the acid is basically just eaten away at all of those so it's going to need a bodge wire. Well uh, thankfully I can use a really small gauge wire for this because it's you know low amp circuit so I'm just going to use a bit of um, wire from an original Walkman. I have a bunch of wires just kicking around from really rusty, dead, unrepairable units. Um, so I'm just going to pre-tin all the uh, pads that I need to do. And there's only, um, I only had to bodge one of these. Um, so what I did was I tested continuity on a known good model um, and made sure I wasn't going to bridge anything and um, there it is in place. the sound of success. Alright, um, now the uh, positive terminal is also corroded um, from the unit so I started pre-tinning a wire but realized the gauge was a bit too thick uh, to bridge from the battery compartment over to the Walkman. Uh, so we'll come back to that one but um, I'm just inspecting now the um, hubs, the little gears in the bottom um, there to make sure there's no bits stuck in there because they will grind away as the unit's running. Um, so I have to disassemble the whole thing to get the belt out. Um, the belt's turned to goo, it's a horrible horrible mess. Um, we need to get the rubber little plastic bushing there. Don't lose that, trust me. Yeah, um, you'll, if you lose it, you're screwed, but basically that comes apart to get the big uh, flywheel out and um, we need to sort of strip this thing down in order to clean it properly to get the goo out. Uh, these wires on this side are one of the most notorious ones for breaking. They are for the FM light and the battery light. Um, so no biggie if that breaks, they can be repaired but more often than not they'll break. And there is one screw with this little metal clamp um, just for the head wiring. You sort of have to separate the little metal fingers in there to you know, pull the um, shielded head wiring out. Um, so we'll just sort of carefully, carefully you can sort of move the board around enough to get in there um, and you can see here the belt is just melted. This is the worst situation for belts because it turns to this black tar and it just gets on everything, on your fingers, on your tools. Um, it's horrible to clean up. Um, you can actually use some WD-40 to help clean some of the stuff up but um, I didn't use any of that on the running gear just because I didn't want belt slippage. Um, we're just going to pull out the hub, the capstan shaft, hub, um, whatever you call it, flywheel. And uh, make sure you do not lose the little plastic or nylon uh, washer that is needed. So just keep that safe. 
it was, I tend to put it with the um, capstan bushing, that's that little retaining plastic thing. Um, you can use a small flathead screwdriver to get into the groove and, and kind of scrape out the remainder of the old belt. Um, it's a bit of a tough job, takes a bit of time, but a bit of patience and you'll get there. And now moving on to one of the parts I don't like, and that's dealing with the motor. Um, there is a screw hiding on um, this side of the wiring, so don't miss that, but we need to kind of separate the top shielding cover um, to clean that because the belt sticks to the bottom of it, as well as the, uh, I don't know what to call it, but it's like a pancake um, motor assembly. It's all, you know, wiring and magnetized. Um, but yeah, that just slides out and you can see the goo. Um, don't be on the, bend the shield because it has a habit of rubbing on things when you do that. So try and keep it um, flat. And here is the disc. Um, this is magnetized. It goes on one way, otherwise um, it won't spin properly. Um, so I tend to place it down the way it came out. Um, also be very careful when you're taking these in and out that you don't break any of the... Um, uh, coils that you see there. If you break one of those the uh, motor won't work properly so I tend to uh, go on the plastic when I'm prying those off. Um, but yeah a bit of good camera work here and you'll be able to sort of scrape away the remainder of the belt which is wrapped around the um, center of the uh, motor pulley. Um, now it's sort of just the easy stuff which I don't mind this part because it's it's sort of you know everything's a part you can get to it easily but I'm just going to use some um, alcohol here just to clean that up. Again you can use WD-40, um, I actually use it on my hands and on my tools after I'm done because it cleans the goo up but I don't tend to recommend it for the actual belt you know parts because um, you don't want any you know belt slippage um, but yeah these are very delicate plastics so I tend to reverse the screwdriver a little bit until the screw falls in through the um, existing um, threads and you'll feel it sort of click and pop and it will go back in um, the idea is not to make new threads otherwise you'll strip out the plastic and you won't be able to uh, retain the cover on and now the centre flywheel um, that cleaned up, there's still a tiny bit in there but um, honestly it's a lot better than it was um, so we can put that back in. Of course not forgetting the uh, nylon or plastic uh, washer, um, I think this is needed for a you know wear or you know a specific spacing, I'm not too sure but it just goes in and slides back through pretty easily. Um, when you're kind of dropping this in, um, there is normally a little um, plastic bush or something in the other side where the capstan shaft pokes through and that can get pushed through as you're trying to line this up. So when it drops in, um, you'll sort of see me with my nail just sort of pushing around the edge of the capstan shaft which is about here see where my nail is um, make sure there's still a bush in there and it's like a spacer to keep the capstan shaft true and then of course the plastic retaining clip those are supposed to be replaced every time you take them off but good luck finding those new i've never found one new a uh, quick plug for fixyouraudio.com it's where i get my belts um, you can get them on eBay, places like that. Um, yeah, they're really good actually. A lot of good parts. Well, replacing the belt itself is actually not too bad. Um, I find it easier to sort of pinch the belt together like this, so it's sort of um, easier to th uh, thread through the, um, what do you call it, that, that shield, that belt shield on the motor and I use my tweezers to, tweezers to sort of just poke it through and then um, once you sort of get it through on the other side enough you can pull it up and around the uh, motor shaft which um, then I tend to use my finger to sort of hold down while I'm sort of pushing the, um, the belt around the other pulleys and uh, it's a little bit tricky to do filming uh, especially at this angle so uh, that's my trick anyway to get it to sort of 
stay on while you're moving things around. After you manage to get your um, fingers in there, God, I'm trying to get that all sorted. Uh, it's sort of easy from here on, so you can just sort of pull the belt around that center pulley and give it a few spins and it will self straighten up and level out because it's a square belt. Uh, so really nice, and you can also check and see how things are moving. Um, so I'm spraying a little bit of WD-40 because my screwdrivers and hands and everything are covered in the goo. Um, you can see it actually takes off and strips down the um, that rubbery. Oh, I don't know what it turns to once it's it's not not rubbery anymore, but <laughs> melted plastic. Um, it's quite good to clean everything up because when you start getting to this point, you really don't want rubber goo on the outside of the case and you know stuff like that. Um, so yeah, at this point we are just going to do some quick maintenance. I'm going to clean the heads and the uh, capstan um, and stuff like that. I'm going to demagnetize the head um, and also the volume knob is a little bit uh, scratchy I noticed in my testing. Um, so it's pretty easy, all you need to do is remove the center screw um, which you know is kind of held down by some bit of Loctite but nothing too major there. I've actually got some Loctite to put back on afterwards and you can pop the gear off and I'm going to use yeah I forget that always flies away um, I'm going to use some deoxit um, this is sort of a spray applicator I, I don't have the other type but I'm just being very careful not to spray the whole inside of the Walkman with this um, because it is also I think some sort of lubricant as well and you don't want that on the belt or any of the running gear just because it will slip so I'm just sort of dripping that around the um, pot for the volume knob. But yeah, not too much, just a little bit. Just enough to wick into the shaft there of the pot. Um, the volume knob itself is keyed, you can see it there. So I tend to put it on and push it down. And then turn the knob all the way to naught. And then that will allow it to um, be in the correct position. The screw goes back in and I am going to put a little bit of this blue... Loctite on there and that will just stop the screw backing out. I don't know if it makes a difference but the factory uh, did it so I will too. And then just the head wiring which is a pain in the backside to film and do at the same time. Um, basically we just need to get the wiring into its little metal retaining clip with the uh, little metal fingers in there. A little bit tricky but it can be done. You don't have to uh, get it in the exact same place, but it helps to keep everything out of the flywheel so they don't get chewed up. Well, my least favorite part is dealing with the LED wires. If they haven't broken off already, they'll probably break off here. Um, and if you get through this unscathed, you're, you've done very, very well because about 80% of the time I pull these things apart, those always break. And the ones at the back where the um, battery compartment is, but these ones here, um, yeah, really annoying. So I probably should have mentioned this before, but it's good to take some photos before you start so you know where the wires are. But I've linked the service manual once again for um, both the F15 and F65 in the description because they are very similar. Um, but yeah, they're there if you need them. Um, very common issue on these is for the plastics to crack and shrink around the headphone and microphone ports, it's very common, and then that will pull out the uh, metal spacer. So we'll deal with that in a moment, but uh, before I forget, I'm gonna run the head demagnetizer through it. Um, I don't know how long I'm supposed to keep this in there for, but the Walkman's actually not powered up, but it's just enough to demagnetize the head. 
and um, yeah before putting everything back together I'm just gonna run a tape through um, but yeah this is what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna gently very very gently melt the um, outside of the headphone jack just to sort of bond the plastics back together it's a very common trick um, you can glue it um, but I'm gonna try this method out because well I've got nothing to lose on it this thing was dead um, and don't forget the metal retaining um, support bracket for the headphone and microphone jack very important if you don't have that you can stress fracture the um, the ports and my trick for getting the door back on is to flip the hinge mechanism around like this and then when you sort of sandwich the door back in um, you have to sort of get it behind the plastic bezel you can then move the hinge into place and I find um, that's often enough just to um, when it's in place that the threads of the screw will hook into it um, and the, then you can screw in the screw so <laughs> real technical but works every time for me so saves sort of mucking about and trying to open the door up and see if the screws in the correct place sort of just push it in and then away it goes I do always reverse the screws though before trying to go straight in there um, and the smaller ones, the very small screws are for the hinge mechanism, they go behind these little gaps in the plastic bezel. You can often just pry up the bezel just enough to get the screws in. Uh, now it's pretty much just putting enough of the screws in to reassemble the unit. Um, I still have to deal with the power issue but I'll get to that in a moment. But um, yeah, just remember that there is two on the left side and one screw behind um, the cover, back cover here on the other side. I do have other videos on this sort of teardown procedure, so I won't go into that too far. But here is the uh, positive terminal for the battery, and I'm going to pre turn a bit of uh, Ethernet cable. I mean, if it's good enough for PoE. Uh, in power injection then it's good enough for a very low amp um, current um, Walkman and plus it's small. I wanted something that was thick enough but small enough um, And I had this sort of line around so that will work I'm going to sort of reapply the Loctite in the left hand corner and I did melt over a very small amount of the clip retainer thing just to keep everything in place and of course you have to clean the tip every time you melt plastic with it but um, and then just we'll just tack down the um, terminal for the positive um, battery feed um, worked very well actually the wire was just thin enough gauge that I could move the cover around and get it all placed back together so I was really happy that that uh, worked and nothing got caught and it didn't bulge the back cover because it's really hard to get these covers back in if there's stuff sort of crammed in there so it uh, worked really well and it didn't interfere with any of the switches at the back as well so that was uh, my other goal so and you can move it into place where you need it and stuff like that so yeah really happy so yeah once again the smaller screw on the right and the larger one on the left opposite it uh, and then there's just the two for the back half near the battery compartment and then there's two around well, I put two back in I was missing the third screw um, for the back cover near the hinges here Well, it's at this point now where we start getting into the final adjustments, so I'm just going to put my headphones on and adjust the tape speed. I don't have a calibration tape. Uh, I could try and make one, but I'm just doing it by ear. So well, what we'll do is we'll plug it into the computer and capture the audio. I wake up on Sunday morning, feel that ache inside my heart. Summer breeze. 
Well, that wraps up this rip here. I was actually really happy it came together. Um, half the time you do these, they don't turn out well. Uh, it's just the nature of them. They're really old, <laughs> really old units now. Um, so it's getting harder to find them in decent enough repairable shape. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, another one's saved. Um, hopefully that helps someone out with a belt replacement and a bit of maintenance, but um, yeah, hopefully uh, useful. All right, I'll be carrying on with some computer stuff later on, and um, yeah, catch you guys soon in the next video.